What is happening, everybody? Greg Ehrenberg here from Stochastic.com and uh, Odd Shop, the uh, sorry, Owner's Box. I almost said Odd Shopper. Too many, too many different things in one day. My bad. Owner Shop, the Owner's Box live show. If you guys tuned in last week, we're going to be doing a lot of the same stuff last week that we are going to do right now, which is build some lineups using the tools that we have available to us here at Stochastic.com. And I also am going to just in case you guys ever want to see how to navigate our website where you find the different stuff. Right within the NFL tab, you go to the NFL DFS simulator and the NFL contest generator. That's where we're going to start here. And here's what we could cover on this. Main slate for owner's box. We'll talk about the showdown slate tonight as well. We'll build out lineups for it. And if you guys want to get access to the tools and data that we have here at stochastic.com, here's the cheapest way to get them for free. You just sign up at owner's box using the link that we have below. And that is going to get you one week totally free access to owner's box. and Let's pull up the YouTube chat. If you guys have any questions for me at all, ask them over the course of the show. We could certainly get to those. And it could be anything, whether we want to talk about the showdown slate for tonight, the main slate, whatever it is that you guys prefer to talk about, I'll acquiesce to you. You guys are the viewers. Whatever it is that you want to see, we'll hit on it here. Only thing I'll ask you is to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And like I said, if you want access to all of this stuff totally for free, sign up using that link below. Get yourself one free week of our NFL package, which includes everything. Our NFL package has our stuff that we've always had in the past, like projections, ownership projections, but now also it comes with stuff like the contest generator and the contest simulator. So you can build your lineups on owner's box, DraftKings, FanDuel, all on this page and then simulate them out as well. Shout out to Josh D who's in the uh, chat there saying, Screech, let's build some lineups, buddy. So Josh, you're the first one in chat. I'm going to leave it up to you. What do we want to start with? Do we want to do the showdown contest first? Or do you want to simulate out the main slate? Whichever it is you prefer. You're the first one to respond in chat. So I'll, uh, I'll let you drive the ship a little bit. Unless you don't respond in the next, you know, 30 seconds or so. Then I'm just going to make an executive call. Uh, but we are going to cover both of them over the course of the show. A couple of things that should be noted. That and uh, Josh D says showdown. So we're going to start with showdown. Build out the 10,000 lineups. So uh, one difference about owner's box for the showdown contests for this week. They have now made it so that the quarterbacks can be played in the flex spot as well as in the multiplier spot. So last week, you were only able to play the quarterbacks in that uh, multiplier spot. Now you can play the quarterbacks in any, any position that you want to. So we're going to start out here by building out some showdown lineups. Got these built out here, and then we will simulate them, and we'll see what ends up coming up. And now also, let's see, for the main showdown contest on owner's box, let's see what is the payout to first place so that I can make sure I do the right settings in here. It is a, all right, yeah, 25% to first place, which is already the default selected. So let's sim the contest and see what ends up coming up. So the uh, main contest tonight on owner's box, we do have a $20,000 prize pool, 5K to first place. If you guys are going to be playing some action over there, over the weekend, I had a lot of fun playing in owner's box. The main thing that is going to make owner's box different on the main slates compared to the main slates on say like FanDuel or DraftKings, that was something that people were asking me last week is what is different about owner's box as compared to FanDuel and DraftKings Superflex, which is a really, really fun variation where you can make double stacks. You play two quarterbacks, you play a quarterback in the flex spot, and you can build some really unique lineups. So my best lineup last week on owner's box finished in, where was it? It was like somewhere around top 50 or something like that. And there was a bunch of people that were at stochastic.com using the Sims tool that were towards the top of the standings. I know Josh's best lineup finished like sixth or seventh. Steve Buzzard came in third. And it was all of us using a lot of the same data and tools here. But let's go ahead and favorite the top. Actually, instead of top 150, let's see. What is the max is 47. So let's go to 47. So favorite 47 lineups. And then we can see what some of the exposures are. So this could be the pool that I would upload directly to owner's box and play these lineups in. Overall, my best projected lineup by ROI for owner's box here, it is Jalen Hurts in the multiplier spot with Dallas Goddard, Josh Oliver, TJ Hawkinson, and AJ Brown. Now, uh, typically, things aren't going to change too, too much for football, but you never know if something happens, like we find out that uh, Rashad Penny is going to start at running back as opposed to DeAndre Swift. That could be stuff that alters some of our projections as we get closer 
to the slate starting. Josh D throwing in the chat. He likes that the owner's box captain spot isn't more expensive. Yeah, there is no there is no thing like DraftKings where it's like for the multiplier spot, 1.5x the salary. There, there isn't that aspect of it over on owner's box. Also curious, see which lineup is expected to be duped the most. So of the lineups that I built out, you could also see in here how often we project these lineups to be duped. So here's a lineup that while it does win a pretty good portion of the time, actually has the highest projected win rate of any of my lineups, it's not projected as one of my top 47 ROI lineups overall. The reason being is because it's expected to be very heavily duped. So this lineup, which is Jalen Hurts, Dallas Goddard, DeAndre Swift, TJ Hawkins, and AJ Brown, expected to be super chalky. And here's some other lineups that are also expected to be really chalky. But here's maybe where you could find utility for one of these lineups. Maybe you want to play a cash game tonight on Owner's Box. This is where one of these lineups that projects really well, that's maybe a little bit more chalky. You don't have to worry about dupes in a cash game as much as in a GPP. As far as the highest projected lineup we have in here, and this is by fantasy points, not by projected ROI, it's Jalen Hurts, Kirk Cousins. So taking advantage of the new uh, positional abilities over on Owner's Box, so you can play two quarterbacks in the same lineup for showdown with Dallas Goddard, DeAndre Swift, and TJ Hawkinson. Now let's go to the exposures. See who it is that we ended up getting the most of in these lineups. And something I'm sure people are going to be asking a lot about over the course of, you know, maybe this show or just in general, if you're watching our showdown live before lock later, which also is going to be sponsored by Owner's Box. And it is, I believe, Lawfee with Neil Orfield tonight. A lot of people are going to want to know what to make of the Philadelphia Eagles running back situation because. Kenneth Gainwell played a massive role for the Eagles in week one. And even though the coaching staff had tipped their hand and had said like, hey, he's going to start, he's going to be our go-to guy. I don't know about you guys. I didn't believe it to the extent that it ended up being the case. Like I, Gainwell was starting, but I didn't think he was going to play a role to the point where like DeAndre Swift got, you know, two carries in the game. I didn't think that it was going to be so much leaning towards Gainwell. Now that he's out, we've got DeAndre Swift who's an explosive running back. We've seen him as a really high fantasy upside guy in the past. He's capable of working both the run game and short down situations. He could also be involved in the passing game on third downs. So DeAndre Swift, it's not totally known what his role is going to be tonight, but I do know there's massive upside with DeAndre Swift, and he's the guy that I like the most from the backfield for the Eagles, and our projections love him as well. He is the player I'm getting the most exposure to overall here in the flex spot. Jalen Hurts is in 34% of lineups at the flex, and then he is in 19% of lineups as the captain. So I am getting to more exposure to Hurts than DeAndre Swift. But with that said, uh, still DeAndre Swift popping up a whole bunch. Jalen Hurts in about 50, what is it, 53% of my lineups overall. But the most rostered captain that I'm getting to here on Owner's Box, it's Justin Jefferson who is a great high upside play for really anywhere that you guys are playing. And we all know this. He's Justin Jefferson. But especially because we have some of this added value available to us, where it's like DeAndre Swift is fairly cheap, and there's this extra availability in the backfield for the Eagles where we even have Rashad Penny. While the preferred option for me here is going to be DeAndre Swift, it doesn't mean Penny is out of the mix. And as of right now, our projections are assuming that Swift is going to get more of the workload. But if we find out, you know, closer to lock, like I said before, that Penny is going to be starting, then maybe we bump Penny up a little bit. But if you look at our fantasy point projection right now, we have Penny projected for six fantasy points and DeAndre Swift at 11.34, the scoring on owner's box. It is PPR scoring. Second most rostered player in the flex spot. It's another running back, Alexander Madison. Also, in the exact same amount of lineups as DeAndre Swift. Out of my top 47 lineups, we got to 44.7% of both DeAndre Swift and Alexander Madison. As far as pass catchers go, Justin Jefferson, who, if I'm doing some quick math off the top of my head by looking at our projection by our uh, exposures here, Jefferson overall, the most rostered player, got to him in 59.6% of lineups. So lots of Justin Jefferson, followed by Dallas Goddard, Jalen Hurts. KJ Osborne, he's somebody who's available as a cheap option. You guys could utilize as a flex play on any on any site for tonight. I do think that KJ Osborne makes some sense as well. And then as far as the Eagles pass catchers, getting to Goddard, who uh, was shut out, had an absolutely crappy week one performance, but uh, projecting for 11.27 fantasy points. Goddard, he's going to bounce back. There's a lot of players that have weak performances in week one that I do expect to bounce back amongst them. 
Dallas Goddard, not in this game, but still worth mentioning. So be like T Higgins, who didn't score any fantasy points in week one. He should be considerably better in week two. I like these buy low spots because there's going to be a massive overreaction by the public. Where they're going to be like, oh, Dallas Goddard, crappy week one game. Don't want to play him this week. And the same thing's going to happen with T Higgins over the weekend. They're going to end up going under owned. And by the way, if you guys have any questions for me in the YouTube chat at all, I see a swoosh bang also in the chat said a showdown. Woo. Yeah. Any questions you guys have comments, throw them in and we'll, uh, we'll get to them. As far as other players, as we scroll down a little bit of Quez Watkins, uh, Boston Scott coming in third for me, as far as exposure to the Eagles backfield. So definite tiers here where Deandre Swift easily tier one. And then behind him, Rashad Penny in 21% of lineup. So I bet Boston Scott at 13%. So the order of priority for me in the Eagles backfield, that's how it goes. Other captain options. So we're getting to the most of Justin Jefferson, followed by Jalen Hurts. And that makes up 40% of our captain ownership. And then as we scroll down, A.J. Brown in 10% of lineups. DeAndre Swift, 8.5. Same with Devontae Smith. By the way, same exact amount of flex and captain exposure here to Smith. So... Uh, Smith looks like somebody I'm going to be underweight to the field too. Hard to get to all of the position players as much as we might want to. A lot of talented players in this game. But uh, Devontae Smith looks like the one who, of the high-end players, I'm getting to the least of on this slate. And then let's see if there's any flyers. I took a captain. Some of KJ Osborne, so that's kind of interesting. And then some of Kirk Cousins as well. But uh, Cousins, I assume that this is going to have me coming in fairly underweight to the field on Kirk Cousins in favor of some of the skill position players in this game because I have 25% of Kirk Cousins in the flex and then 8.5% of him in the captain spot. Let's go ahead, unless you guys have any other questions about the showdown contest for today, I think that kind of covers it and we can move over to the main slate and we'll build out lineups for that. So we'll go to owner's box, make sure the main slate's selected. I'll build out 10,000 lineups. We could also set some stack exposures, but I'll just let the machine work for me and see what it ends up giving me in terms of the different, different exposures to different stacks, and we'll see what pops up. So this is going to be for the main slate now on Sunday. Like I mentioned, super flex, so we're going to have lineups where you can play two quarterbacks over on owner's box and... Yeah, that was what the majority of the top scoring lineups for the Sunday slate. It was ones that played quarterback in the in the quarterback spot, obviously, and then also in the super flex spot as well. So my best lineup ended up being, uh, it was actually a Jordan Love Packers stack on one side, and then it was a Kirk Cousins with the Vikings on the other side, uh, and then some uh, Tyreek Hill was in it. I forget who else, but... Let's get into this and see who it is that we are getting to the most of here. So in terms of some of the players that expected to be most popular over on owner's box, we could sort by projected ownership. So here's what we got just in terms of who's expected to be most popular. What is the chalk on owner's box for the main slate on Sunday? It is David Montgomery, Christian McCaffrey, Josh Allen. Those are the three players projected for north of 25% ownership. David Montgomery, 37.2%. So by far projected to be the most popular player on the slate over there. Then beyond them, we've got Tyler Higby, Tony Pollard, Rashad White. I'm very interested in Rashad White for this weekend. Him and Christian McCaffrey, the only two players on Sunday that played 100% of their team's of their team snaps. So White was on the field constantly. He didn't produce much. The offense kind of struggled a little bit. Rashad White was inefficient. And we might just find out that he's terrible this year. We might just find out the Buccaneers have a bad offense this year. But Rashad White across all sites is relatively cheap this weekend. And you're also getting him at a really high volume in terms of what just he's going to be on the field a lot. He's going to get a lot of touches. And that's just going to be an opportunity to find success. So Rashad White, I like him on all sites this weekend. He's also going to be, you know, fairly popular here on owner's box. But all these lineups that were just built out for me, let's sim them out and go to 30% the owner's box main contest for Sunday. It has $175,000 prize pool. And of that, it has uh, 50% going to first place. So I'll select the 30% to first here. And then uh, Rob Frost wants to know, is it best to use running backs or receivers in the flex? It's going to be different slate to slate. Like for today, my overall favorite flex player on every single site is going to be DeAndre Swift. 
but it's all relative to like, what are we expecting production from, from different players? What are their price points and whatnot? But uh, Rob Frost, uh, it's, it's not necessarily like you should play a running back or a wide receiver. It's just going to be based on like what the best options are on any individual day. Question here while the lineup simulate, this is a question from, uh, from Nofal Asfura, he says that he's seeing uh, a lot of the Sims do not include bring back in the lineups for the main slate. There's a way to make that happen. This is what uh, this is what our says. Yes. So it's actually something that is being tested as I'm speaking right now. And I am anticipating that it's going to be public as part of the tool in fairly short order. But yes, for week two, there's going to be a way to force runbacks. And it's going to be like a scale where you could set what percentage of your lineups have runbacks in them. And yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. I've been testing around with it a little bit. It's being worked on at the moment. Good question. Happy to ask that, Nofal. Lineups are almost done being simulated right now, and then we'll see uh, who I ended up getting the most exposure to for the owner's box slate. And we've got uh, no fall, uh, following up, just saying, uh, good stuff. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man, me too. Definitely looking forward to using it this weekend. And then, uh, Jeremy Savage saying, uh, receivers now. Yeah. Let's see what kind of receivers we're getting to. And, uh, by the way, if you see the stack type here, one of the reasons that it's a little bit more expansive for owner's box, if you're in the Sims tool as compared to like FanDuel or DraftKings is you're going to see two stack types in here, right? It's going to be your primary stack, and then also the super flex stack. So you can see what lineups you have that are including double stacks there. But let's favorite the top 150. And the number one projected lineup in here, by the way, if you guys ever want to change the size of the columns to fit your screen or whatever, pretty easy. You just move it around like that. And you could also uh, remove stuff from the columns as well. But our number one projected ROI lineup for this Sunday slate, it is Joe Burrow. And Jared Goff is the two quarterbacks. And then Joe Burrow is stacked with Jamar Chase and with Tyler Boyd. Jared Goff is stacked with Amon Ross St. Brown. So we've got, uh, yeah, two stacks that are in there. And then right now we have uh, no follow follow-up saying, what would be the best way to choose the lineups we want to enter? Been favoring the top 300 by sim percentage and then uploading it into uh, fan and then uploading it into uh, CSV. So here's the easiest way to do it. If you are playing, you know, it's going to depend obviously what contest you're playing in. But for me, I'll tell you what I do. I'm generally playing 150 max. So if I'm on this screen, I have nothing favorited, right? I go quick favorite, 150, and then just export favorites. And then I just get the file gets downloaded to my computer. And from there, I just upload it directly to DraftKings and FanDuel. So that to me is the easiest way to do it. Now for you, it said that you're doing uh, top 300 lineups. So it depends, like, what are you doing with the 300? Are you playing in two different contests that you're 150 maxing? And then you just want to differentiate so you're getting more exposure there? You could do that. For me, though, if I'm playing 150, I'm just selecting out the top 150 lineups, especially because... All right, let's do a little experiment here. So the projected ROI... And by the way, the way the projected ROI works is all the lineups that we just made, guys. Those 10,000 that I made from the contest generator. We simulated them on this page. They played against each other 40,000 times. And this is what the ROI of those lineups were when they played each other in a tournament setting against each other. All right. So with that in mind, our 150th lineup had a sim ROI of 172%. Okay. Now let's favor the top 300. What's the drop off here? Not crazy, but still. Here's, here's why I'm in favor of just playing the top 150 as opposed to the top 300. The 300th lineup here had a 136.3% projected ROI when these lineups all played against each other. So you are playing some lesser lineups when you're favoriting 300 as opposed to 150. I get that you're you know diversifying a little bit by playing additional lineups. But my, my preference would just be to play the top 150. I wouldn't go as deep to the top 300. And then a follow-up, he said, uh, can you just enter the top 150? Uh, yeah, you just enter the top 150. That's what I do. I don't really do a whole lot else unless it's something like, if you have something you really feel differently about than our data for whatever reason, 
here's the best way to go about doing uh, any kind of adjustments, the ROI boost. So within here, actually, here's what's going to be easiest. Let's favorite the top 150 and let's start looking at our exposures. So we have 63% of David Montgomery in our top 150 lineups. Now, let's say that you want less of David Montgomery. He projects really well for us. He's going to be really chalky at 37%. We're getting to a 63.3. I generally just tend to trust the data. But every once in a while, a situation will arise. We'll be like, hey, there's some uncertainty with somebody's workload or something like that. If you wanted to make those kind of adjustments, you could go to David Montgomery here and you could say like, all right, let's give him a negative 25% ROI boost. You could boost it. And then you go into the lineups here. You could unfavorite all of them. I'll resort them by ROI. I realized I just forgot to click uh, apply. So let me go to Montgomery again. And you would apply the boost. And then after you apply it, you would change the, uh, it would change the simulated ROI of the lineups that he's in. Uh, right now, tool is uh, being worked on. So that, that uh, button isn't working at the moment, but that's how you would do it. That's the easiest way to change any kind of manual inputs. That's what I do is I would boost some of the ROIs of the players. And then we have uh, no fall loss asking, am I afraid of too much exposure in my top 150? No, not at all. If somebody's that good of a play, and here's here's also, I'll, I'll explain it this way. Dave Montgomery's in 63.3% of our top 150 lineups. It's a good amount of exposure. It's nothing like insane or anything like that. By the way, shout out to uh, Greg in the chat who says, shout out to my fellow Greg. Shout out to my fellow Greg. Here's why I don't have an issue with it. If you're uncomfortable with getting too much exposure to one player, to me, the answer is not to just blindly reduce the ownership of that player. To me, the answer is to play less lineups because you don't want to just play worse lineups for the sake of diversifying. That's my take on it anyway. So if you went out here and you're just like, I want to play 10 less David Montgomery lineups, you're just playing 10 weaker lineups. You might as well just play 10 less lineups at that point. Different people could feel differently about it. That's how I approach it though. Also, we had a question here from uh, Jeffrey St uh, Stavosky. He wants to know cash lineup. Here's one thing we could do. Let's look at our highest projected lineup in here. So this is not going to be based on ROI, just based on fantasy point projection. The top projected lineup that I have in here for owner's box, project for 142.6 fantasy points, is Patrick Mahomes, Christian McCaffrey, David Montgomery, Debo Samuel, Tyler Boyd, Adam Troutman, Sky Moore, uh, Puka, and then Josh Allen. So that to me is like, if you wanted to build lineups out of here and do it for a cash game setting, just go with the highest projected lineup as opposed to the ROI, at least for a cash game. Let's look at more of the exposures that we got to and see what we ended up getting to in here. David Montgomery is uh, most, most uh, exposed player across our lineups. He's also expected to be really popular, but looks like a good piece of chalk based on our data here. Josh Allen, our most rostered QB, followed by Patrick Mahomes. So getting to the studs at QB, two quarterbacks that struggled in week one that I expect to bounce back. Although Patrick Mahomes didn't struggle by any fault of his own. He struggled because his wide receivers were absolutely god-awful and couldn't catch the passes. Mahomes looked really good and played really well. We're getting to a lot of Sky Moore here as well as a stacking option with Patrick Mahomes, which I'm sure is going to scare the shit out of a lot of people. Here's why I like it, though. Sky Moore... Got opportunities in week one. He was on the field a lot. Wasn't able to catch the ball. Wasn't able to generate separation. But what's expected to happen in week two for the Chiefs? If we do get, we don't know this for sure, but it's Thursday. I'm assuming that Travis Kelsey plays in week two. If that is the case, that is going to really benefit Sky Moore from a standpoint of there's somebody else to get some attention from the defense. So we'll see what ends up happening. We're also getting some exposure to Noah Gray here, but only Thursday. Some stuff will certainly change by the time the uh, weekend rolls around. And then we've got uh, No Fall said that uh, in a build that he had, he was getting to a lot of the Chargers defense or, oh, a bunch of Chargers stacks. Yeah, but I, don't, I really don't have an issue with being really heavily exposed to any one situation if it's expected to be really plus EV. Chris Garza in the chat said, uh, trade... Mixon and A.J. Brown for Henry and Olive? Do you mean, I, I assume you mean Olave. So Mixon and A.J. Brown for Derrick Henry and Chris Olave. I would much prefer the Derrick Henry and Chris Olave side of that equation. Said it's PPR. 
let's see what else we have in here as far as exposure. So other wide receiver, most rostered wide receivers, Sky Moore being one, getting to a bunch of Stefan Diggs, so makes sense. We're getting to Patrick Mahomes stacks, and then Stefan Diggs correlates with Josh Allen stacks we're getting of him. As far as other quarterbacks, Joe Burrow, another quarterback that I expect to bounce. All the stud quarterbacks, for the most part, kind of shit the bed in week one. I think a lot of them are going to bounce back. Joe Burrow being another one. Who do we get to the most with a, with Joe Burrow as a stack? <laughs> Greg the Gifted in chat. Shout out to all the Gregs. Gregs only. We're going to start kicking people out of here if they are named Greg. Gregs only in these parts. So Joe Burrow and then... Let's see. What are the other? Yeah. So Jamar Chase, we're getting to pretty sensible if we have a good amount of Joe Burrow. T Higgins, bro, those are the stacking options we're getting to there. Let's see who we're underweight to. Let's see. We're coming in underway to Luke Musgrave, coming in underway to Adam Troutman. So Troutman, this is primarily due to ownership, project for 21%. We got some in 10% of lineup. So before somebody asked about cash games, I mentioned Troutman's in our highest projected lineup, but. In terms of tournament purposes, he does look a little bit overowned. Uh, Trevor Lawrence coming in under uh, underway to him, also coming in underway to Justin Herbert. Not the case last week. We're getting to a lot of Justin Herbert, a lot of Justin Herbert, a lot of Tua last week. Underway to that here. Let's see if there's any contrarian players we're overweight to. And uh, Ryan Nelson asking how much overlay was on owners box for NFL. It was. Off the top of my head, the main contest was 15,800 entries, and it filled 12,100. If I remember exactly, I actually think it was 12,999 entries. I think that's what it was. We're going off memory from a few days ago. I'm usually pretty good with memory. I'm, I'm in the ballpark at the very least. Players that we are overweight to that are contrarian. Stefan Diggs only project for 13% ownership to get to him in 31% of lineups. Here's an interesting one. Matt Stafford. Stafford looked good last week, did he not? He looked healthy. He had unexpected receivers that broke out. Tutu Atwell, Puka Nakua. My best lineup in the uh, Millie Maker on DraftKings, for instance, actually had Nakua and Atwell in it. I came fairly close to winning the Millie. I don't have an issue with going back to Nakua, especially if he's not going to be all that popular. On owner's box here, we've got him projected for 11% ownership, popping up in 21% of lineups. This looks like a good contrarian stack. Matt Stafford to Puka Nakua maybe gets juiced up a little bit as the week goes on, but they're playing the 49ers. It's a tough matchup, so I don't really know that we're going to see ownership get too, too crazy on that spot. Tutu Atwell also showing up in 17% of our lineups. Let's see if there's anything else of note. Brock Purdy. So like a good mini game stack here to be contrarian. Purdy. Nakua, Stafford, all playing in the same game, and also Debo Samuel. So uh, four contrarian players that were, well, see, Debo isn't that contrarian at 17%, but on the whole, I think it's a very contrarian game stack to make that seems to be projecting pretty well for us. Let's look at some of our stack exposures, and then we'll wrap up here. If you guys haven't done it yet, by the way, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to sign up for the tools that I have on screen here, there's a link below to sign up for owner's box. And when you sign up an owner's box, get one totally free week of our NFL package at Stochastic. Comes with our contest generator, comes with our Sims tool as well. So the uh, QB plus one stacks we're getting the most of, it's Josh Allen followed by Patrick Mahomes. Those are the two we have double digit exposure to. The QB plus two stacks, it's Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, and Josh Allen as the three that we're getting to. And then QB plus three. One thing we talked about last week is that we were getting to a lot of QB triple stacks, but I did say that it was something that, you know, it was kind of going to be different week to week in terms of what projects is optimal. For this week, we're not getting to as many of the triple stacks as we were a week ago. But of the triple stacks, we're getting most of it's Jared Goff at 5%. Nothing all that significant. But it does look like we're getting to the stud quarterbacks this weekend. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes. As the high as the stacks, I have the most exposure to. Then Josh Allen, Patrick Holmes, as far as single stacks, looks like we want to build around the studs for this week. One final question that we have in the YouTube chat, and we'll wrap this up. He says, uh, LeBriar asks, with Gainwell getting hurt last week, do you think Sirianna will spread the ball out more evenly between the backs, or do you think he'll use Swift like he used Gainwell last week? Thanks. I can tell you, based on my lineups, I hope he uses Swift like he uses Gainwell last week. I do think that Swift has the most upside of any of the running backs. I'm really highly prioritizing him in any of the contests I'm playing in this week. I can't tell you definitively that this is what he is going to do. 
Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more spread out than last week, but I still think it's going to favor DeAndre Swift, who's going to be in a lot of my lines. I love getting DeAndre Swift, one of my favorite plays on the slate, no matter where you're playing. Owner's box, if you guys saw at the top when I was running lineups for the showdown slate, I had him in 44.7% of lineups. He was my most exposed player. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you've not done it yet, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're looking for more football content tonight, Lofi and Neil Orfield on NFL Live Before Lock to break down the slate in full. Check those guys out. Guys, have a good one. Also, I'll be on the baseball show tonight if you want to watch that. So peace out and good luck tonight.